In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria. I'm very honored to be here with you all at a day with Mary. Um, here in Wimbledon, years ago I used to work in Wimbledon. And um, I want to thank the Day with Mary and all the Day with Mary team for all that they've done for me and the friars. Um, I was blessed to go on pilgrimage with the Day with Mary to the Holy Land. And let us together thank God for the good work that a Day with Mary is doing in promoting the Fatima message, which is a message of prayer and penance, of reparation of consecration to Mary, of the prayer of the Holy Rosary, and the practice of the first five Saturdays and the communion of reparation. And the Fatima message has at its heart the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph, she said. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia, which will convert to me, she said. And a certain period of peace will be granted to the world. The immaculate heart is the means through which we will see a complete restoration and the triumph of our faith. And it is on the Immaculate Heart that I would like to speak to you all today. The devotion to the heart of Mary and the Immaculate Heart already existed in the church before Our Lady's apparitions in Fatima in 1917. Over the centuries, Holy men and women have honored and venerated the heart of Mary. There were saints who had a great devotion to the heart of Mary, such as Saint Matilde, Saint Bonaventure, Saint Bernardine of Siena, Saint John Eudes, Saint Veronica Giuliani, Saint Anthony Maria Claret just to name some of them. And in recent times, the Franciscan Blessed Gabriele Maria Allegra. But probably of all these mentioned, the most privileged soul to have been given this devotion to the Immaculate Heart is Venerable Sister Lucia of Fatima. She was the one chosen to give this devotion of the Immaculate Heart to the world. A devotion that God wants everyone to embrace. In the second apparition of Fatima, on the 13th of June, 1917, after the 10-year-old Lucia asked Our Lady to take her and her two cousins to heaven, Our Lady replied, Yes, I shall take Jacinta and Francisco soon, but you will remain here for some time yet. 
Jesus wishes to use you in order to make me known and loved. He wishes to establish devotion to my immaculate heart in the world. I promise salvation to those who embrace it. And those souls will be beloved of God like flowers arranged by me to adorn his throne. Can you believe it, dear brothers and sisters? Our Lady said, I promise salvation to those who embrace it. What are we doing to make people embrace the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary? Why are we doing nothing? We should be utilizing everything we have, employing every means that we have at our disposal, using all of our energy and strength to spread the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary so that everyone can embrace it. Because it is through that heart that the world will be saved. And it is through that heart that there will be less souls going to hell. In the third apparition, on the 13th of July, after Our Lady showed the three children hell, she said, You have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish devotion to my Immaculate Heart in the world. If they do what I shall tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. In the same month, she told them, sacrifice yourself for sinners, and say many times, especially when you make some sacrifice, O oh Jesus, this is for love of thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The Heart of Mary can be compared to Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark, in fact, is a type of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a prefiguration of her as well as the Church. But we can also say that in a certain sense, it prefigures the Heart of Mary. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, in seeing Mary as the heavenly ark, says that she is the ark in which we escape shipwreck. And St. Bernardine of Siena tells us that the Blessed Virgin Mary, like a good mother, carries all her children in her heart. So let us be inside that heart to escape the ruin of our souls. The Immaculate Heart of Mary is a mystery. Not even the blessed in heaven can fully understand the depth and the breadth of this heart, nor can they understand fully how much of God's treasures have been placed inside that heart. St. Bernardine of Siena tells us that all the gifts and graces of the Holy Ghost descended into the soul and heart of this heavenly virgin in such fullness, especially when she conceived the Son of God within her chaste womb, that her heart forms an abyss of grace which no human or angelic intellect can comprehend. The mind of God, that of her son Jesus and her own, 
are alone capable of understanding the abundance and perfection of this ocean of grace. St. Bernardine of Siena. Now let us understand what was being said there. No human or angelic intellect is capable of understanding the abundance and perfection of the Immaculate Heart. Only God and Our Lady can understand. It is a mystery. It is an abyss of grace. It is an abyss of love. That is not to say that we cannot understand some of this mystery. Part of this mystery is that God dwells in that heart. In the collect for the mass of the Immaculate Heart, we read these words. Almighty everlasting God, who in the heart of blessed Virgin Mary didst prepare a dwelling worthy of the Holy Ghost, grant in thy mercy that we, who with devout minds celebrate the festival of that Immaculate Heart, may be able to live according to thine own heart. The Holy Spirit dwells in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But not only this. In contemplating that flame of love in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, set ablaze by the fire of love in which you can contemplate the Holy Spirit, you can also contemplate Jesus as that living flame. Jesus in the heart of Mary. God spoke to Moses from the burning bush, which prefigures the perpetual virginity of Mary. But St. John Eudes, in his book, The Admirable Heart of Mary, writes an interesting chapter called Mary's Heart, the Burning Bush of Moses. And I'd like to quote to you just a part of it. He writes, quote, God loved the burning bush because the fire that encompassed without consuming it represented the fire of divine love which filled the heart of Mary, a love far greater than that of all the hearts of men and angels. The thorns symbolized the bitter sorrow and unspeakable anguish which pierced the heart of the mother of God suffering that she accepted for the love of God and the salvation of mankind. Moreover, God descended from heaven into the bush on Mount Horeb and manifested himself to Moses in the flame of fire to show his love and charity towards his people and spoke from the midst of the bush or according to another version, from the heart of the bush to declare his intention of delivering the children of Israel from the captivity of Pharaoh through the instrumentality of Moses. In like manner, the Son of God, in the excess of his love, descended from the bosom of the Eternal Father into his mother's heart, ablaze as it was with love for God and charity towards men, in order to bring about our redemption and to associate her with himself as the instrument of this great work. God remained in the burning bush only a short time, but he will forever abide in the heart of our glorious mother. Then St. John Hughes goes on to say, Dear reader, do not forget that your heart must burn with the loving fire that enkindled the virginal heart of Mary, the fire 
that the Son of God came to spread upon earth, end quote. And Jesus said, I came to cast fire upon the earth and would that it were already kindled or how I wish it were already kindled. We need the love of God to be enkindled in each heart. St. John Eudes says that, quote, Jesus Christ is the heart of Mary. Obviously, Jesus and Mary are not one and the same person. It's not saying that Jesus is Mary as if they are the same person. But he says, quote, his heart abides in her heart. And he also says, honoring this heart of Mary, who is Jesus Christ himself, St. John Eudes says, as well as telling us, do you not know that not only is Jesus resting and dwelling continually in the heart of Mary, but that he is himself the heart of Mary, end quote. So this is part of the mystery of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Contemplating that fire in her heart, not only as the love of God, as well as contemplating the Holy Spirit, but also Jesus. Jesus as the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And we can contemplate in Mary's heart, God, God as a fire. For us, St. Paul says in his letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 29, that our God is a consuming fire. I'd like to conclude by reflecting again on what St. John Hughes contemplates in the thorns in the burning bush, saying that, the thorns symbolized the bitter sorrow and unspeakable anguish which pierced the heart of the Mother of God. Our Lady appeared to Sister Lucia on the 10th of December, 1925, together with the child Jesus, showing Sister Lucia her heart, surrounded by thorns, saying, my daughter, look at my heart surrounded with thorns with which ungrateful men pierce me at every moment with their blasphemies and ingratitude. You at least try to console me and say that I promise to assist at the hour of death with the graces necessary for salvation all those who on the first Saturday of five consecutive months shall confess, receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the Rosary and keep me company for 15 minutes while meditating on the 15 mysteries of the Rosary with the intention of making reparation to me. Let us console the heart of our mother. Let us do what we can to make all souls embrace the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the devotion which has attached to it the first five Saturdays. And let us be set ablaze with the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, who is Jesus Christ himself for the salvation of many souls and the exaltation of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.